live web section for 10.30 p.m. tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section and there's a microphone provided. James. Hi, Ange. How are the injuries looking ahead of this weekend? Um, uh, uh, Wilson, um, yeah, doesn't look good. Um, still waiting for it to settle down and get sort of all the information, but he'll definitely be out uh, for sort of a, the next period. Um, Bissouma trained today, so he uh, should be available for tomorrow. Uh, Timo was okay, uh, recovered okay. Everyone else from the game didn't train who played last week. It's good. How, uh, what's, sorry, what's the nature of Odebert's injury? It's hamstring. Hamstring. Yeah. And Richarlison, how is he coming on? No, he's a fair way off. I, I think you should stop asking me about him until I give you a bit of an update because we've been doing it on a weekly basis. He's still not training with the first team, so he's still a bit off. Okay. Uh, one win from your opening four Premier League games. To what extent does that increase the importance and the pressure going into this game? doesn't change, it's the same, um, you know, whether you win the first four, I hate to think you're going to this game thinking you can lose it, I think you try and win every game and, uh, you know, we're at home and we've also played well in those four games, so that's the first thing, we've got to perform as we have been and, uh, you know, as I said in the, in the league that, um, you know, performances have been really consistent in terms of dominating games, but we haven't really got reward for our, for our dominance and, um, you know, that's the area we're kind of... Still trying to focus on in terms of you know in that front third to make sure we get rewards for, for our good play. You go into a period now where you'll play five games in what just over two weeks. How important do you think this period is? I think that's going to be our period for the next uh, it's probably till the end of January. So we're kind of planning for that. Um, this is probably the shortest in terms of turnaround because it's a Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday. Um, most of the others are kind of Sunday, Thursday, Sunday for the most part. So probably a day less in this little uh, free game uh, stretch. But, yeah, it's, you know, the good thing is um, we've got some game time with some guys on uh, on Wednesday night who hadn't played for quite a while. So, you know, they're ready and available um, should we require them. And um, I think that's going to be the key for us, the, the ability to sort of, you know, um, bring guys in who, who are fresh but also um, have played recently. And in terms of the schedule, a lot's been made of the new structure of the European competitions and potentially players striking, not getting I think I said last week, I think it's something that needs to, to be looked at. It's not just, obviously it's not just club football, it's international football, it's a requirement. It's as much about, you know, how much recovery players get even between seasons. I think that's where the biggest problem lies for me anyway, is that, you know, um, if you give players enough time to recover between seasons, then it gives them a better opportunity to you know, to, to play the, the games that seem to be in the schedule now. But um, it seems like that the windows of recovery for players are getting smaller and smaller, and uh, I definitely think that's an issue. Hi, Ange. Good afternoon. Good seeing you again. You too. Um, for the Tottenham fans, obviously winning a trophy this season would mean a lot. Um, how important was Wednesday's win, um, also in terms of the spirit after the result against Arsenal last weekend? Yeah, it's important. Um, it's always important. You know, you kind of know in a comp cup competition, if you don't win, you don't progress. So that's the first thing. And, uh, you yeah, know, obviously progressing uh, to the next round is, is great. Um, you know, the performance, uh, as I said on the night, we had to work really hard. It was a different kind of performance. We just had to hang, hang in there, and we did. And then, uh, you know, I think uh, showed tremendous spirit at the end there and, and some really good um, sort of input from guys coming on um, to, to make sure we... We won the game and progressed to the next round. And the fact you brought on uh, two subs that scored and eventually won the game, how significant is it that you have this squad depth, especially that this season you're, you're back to Europe and you, you have more options? Yeah, it will be important for us. Um, you know, as I said, that's why I think Wednesday night, um, you know, we've got a lot of players who, who played 90 minutes who, or you know, 70 minutes who um, haven't played a lot recently. So you know, Archie Lucas, Ben Davies, uh, Rody got another 90, which is important. Um, even Destiny's 45 and, 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 and Dom's sort of 60, 70 are really important for us, you know, kind of minutes-wise, because, uh, like I said, what you, you know, it's great having a squad, but if you're throwing in guys who haven't played for three, four weeks, it's very hard for them to contribute, both from, because they don't, you know, they're not sharp as they should be match-wise, but also physically, you know, you, you're worried. So just getting more guys game time and we'll get plenty of opportunity you know, is going to be important. Every Premier League game is difficult. If you look at Brentford, how unique is what uh, Thomas Frank has been achieving there and how challenging the task will be this weekend? Yeah, great challenge. Um, yeah, Thomas has, you know, he's, he's turned them into, you know, a really sort of difficult and, and 
a challenging team for every um, for everyone in the league. You saw them last week against City. I thought they played really well. Um, uh, took the game to City, and um, it's always a challenge. But that's that's the Premier League. I don't think there's any games you go into thinking they're, they're going to be any uh, easier than the others. And uh, um, yeah, we have to be ready for for Brentford tomorrow. And uh, but we are at home, and you know we, we just got like I said, we've got to make sure we continue with our strong performances in the league, but turn those performances into results. Hi Ange, hope you're well. There was a lot of excitement around Tottenham last season among the fan base. Obviously because of results, maybe some of that excitement has subsided so far this season. So how important is it to, to get a result tomorrow and maybe bring the feel-good factor back around the club again? Yeah, look, as I said before, I, I, you know, I just think if you start thinking in those terms, then you, you, like I said, you, you miss the, the priorities of what you need to do to... to um, you know, stay competitive in this league, and that is every week is a challenge. So, you know, even if we had got four wins so far, which we could have with our performances and the feel-good factor was around, you know, dropping a game tomorrow wouldn't make us feel any better. So the challenge is always the same. I think uh, that's the beauty of the, the competition we're in. Um, you know, every week you've got to be up for it, and uh, we've got to make sure we do that tomorrow. And you mentioned about the performances this season. The fans loved what they saw last season in terms of the style of football. Obviously, so far this season, because of results, maybe not quite managed to hit those sort of levels and that style of play that we, we saw last season. So have you managed to put your finger on why we've managed not to, maybe not quite hit the level that you saw last season? Well, I guess it depends on, on what you mean by level. I, I certainly think our first four games, we, we were, we've been as dominant as we were last year around for any series of games, um, all four games, I think we've outpossessed uh, the opposition. We've created double the chances of the opposition. Um, you know, we've played the game mostly in the opposition half, but because you don't win, people kind of always look at the outcomes, which is understandable. But you know, for me, um, I think we need to maintain our focus on, on what's important to us and the principles of our play. And as I said, if we um, you know just show a bit more sort of conviction in that front third, I'm sure we'll get the rewards for it soon. price tag that's, that came with him coming to the club. What have you made of, of the way he settled into the club and, and what, what more is there to come from him? He settled in really well, um, really well and there's plenty more to come from him because he got injured so you know he's only sort of played two and a bit games for us and uh, you know um, he just needs to sort of um, you know get some games under his belt but you know we've already seen in the games he has played you know he's going to be a real sort of asset for us and uh, I've got no doubt that uh, he'll be a, a huge contributor. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ange. Um, there was um, some booze from the stand, and you've already talked about it, the substitution in Coventry. But um, I just wanted to talk about if that negative sort of fan sentiment um, that you know there's some division in the fan base, if that seeps into the environment you have and, and the player environment. Um, well, it doesn't seep, seep into my environment. I've always said uh, fans are. Uh, um, are more than sort of um, free to feel what they feel. I'm not going to you know, dictate the mood of what they do, but it doesn't impact me or what we're trying to achieve. I think um, I think you get carried away in both, way, both ways. You know, um, as I said, we, we just got to stay sort of clear-eyed and focused on you know what we're trying to achieve here and the kind of football team we want to be. And you know, if um, if that's swimming against the tide sometimes, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that makes you stronger. You said you don't really use social media last week, and um, but I'm sure a lot of your players do. Do you, do, you th do you have to talk to them a little bit about the sort of maybe environment and, and not letting that get to them and sort of sticking to the plan that you guys have? I don't, not, not specifically. I'd like to think you know, players are, are well aware of you know, the pitfalls of you know, falling into that world. Um, but you know, everyone's got their own choices um, around that. I, I think if you start seeking validation from, uh, you know, anonymous people, then I think you, you're going down a rabbit hole that's uh, probably going to end up in tears rather than anything else. And obviously, you're making big changes at the club with personnel and, and style of play and all this kind of stuff, and, and there's a lot of historic, um, you know, changes you're making. Um, do you sort of feel like maybe that's part of the tension, that you know, there's a lot of changes going on, people aren't getting used to it and it's it's not all supposed to be, you know, going up and... Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think whenever there's change, um, 
real change, significant change. I think it, it does, it unsettles people because people, this is just human nature, you, you kind of want comfort and security. Um, but, you know, again, you know, I, I came in here to try and do something that hasn't been done for quite a while. And my view is whenever I've, when I've done that wherever I've gone is that you can't just think that me walking in is the answer. You know, you've got to change things. And, um, and when that happens, it is. It's unsettling for people, both internally and externally, but I think it's a necessary part of you know, trying to achieve what we need to. Everyone talked about the first 10 games he had, which were excellent, but um, you know, is, is that sort of uh, maybe a false dawn a little bit at a time, and, and maybe it's going to take longer for that sort of run to be consistent ac across a longer period? No, I don't think it was a false dawn. I think we deserved it. Whether we played well in the first ten games, we, you know, we had, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, I guess I could sit down and go historically as to why after that ten games, when you know we lost probably three of our back four for two months after that, and matters for pretty much most of the year. So, like, but if people want to sort of just look at it in isolation of just results, yes. 10 games we did well, then afterwards we didn't do well, but you know, I think there was legitimate reasons for that. Okay. Um, just a quick one on his Basuma. Is he in a position, if you need him to, to start, or are you going to be cautious with him? Or? No, well, like I said, he trained today, he trained, um, trained fully. Um, it is his first session, so we'll just have to see how he pulls up, but you know, again, if he's available, he's available. Um, and kind of on the aspect of change and changing the club, you're probably aware you're the first manager that's lasted a full season in the last half a decade at this club. Yeah, they had a cake for me the other that's day. Not <laughs> um, I mean, on that kind of topic, how difficult is it to, to kind of put in real long-term change at a club that obviously needs another change or a, a more long-term change of direction when it's had so many changes and different routes over the years? Uh, look, it's, it's not difficult for me because that's how I've always worked. I, I, I keep saying, I, I know I'm not going to be here forever, but I, I work like I will be and I'll make changes that I think are going to set the cl club up for success in, for a sustainable period. So every decision I'll make is, is along you know, that backdrop. But you know, sometimes, I think if you, if you sort of get caught in, in, in this kind of timeline scenarios, I, I, just, I just think you end up making results that potentially, okay, short term might, might feel good, but long term you're not going to get to where you want to and that's all I'm interested in. I just want to, like I said, my, my brief and my focus and my ambition is to bring success. Every decision I make is against the backdrop of that. If you'll uh, permit me one kind of non-football question I just wanted to ask. It's only because um, Liz talking about social media made me think about it. When you were talking about Brennan, you mentioned, I think you said, I can switch off and my one follower doesn't uh, yeah. notice or get upset by it. Do you actually have like a, an account that you occasionally <laughs> dip into that world in? No, I don't. I, 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 look, I, I, there was years ago. I used to, I used to be on um, just generally because I like the information that I was getting initially, th uh, especially through uh, Twitter, as it used to be called. Um, I thought it was a great resource for information. There was some some pretty uh, smart young people on there as well, especially around the football analytics and stuff that I used to get excited about. But I, pff, mate, it's went downhill pretty quickly. And to be fair, the last two three years, I just don't look at it anymore. I just don't think there's any use in it. For me anyway, uh, in my life. And uh, yeah, my, my one follower is gutted about that. <laughs> Thank you. James. Hi, Ange. Um, you talked a lot about efficiency in the final third and needing to improve that. I know it's only been a small injury for Solanke, but how disruptive has that been sort of to your planning? Well, it has on the back of Richie not being available either because, I mean, we, we were kind of working on, you know, we thought Richie would be available round one and then he's had the setback, obviously, which has put him out. So, you know, that, that, that hasn't helped us because like, the, the whole plan was, you know, to have kind of two really robust strikers who could, you know, really give us a real threat up front. And, you know, with, with both of them out, it's kind of made it a little bit difficult about to juggle things a little bit, you know, Played Sonny through there, uh, played Decky through there, Kulisevsky through there, so it hasn't been smooth. But again, I, I'm hoping that's sort of behind us now. Bit of luck. And obviously, he came in for a big fee, club record, 65 million. It, is that an adjustment that he'll have to make to sort of deal with the expectation that comes with that? Yeah, I, I don't know because 
it's, you know, people were just so quick to judge, mate. It's a small chance. The guy's played two, less than two games for us. I mean, if he's gone 15 games without a goal, then I can answer that question. Or 15 games and he hasn't really contributed or he's down. But, you know, I, I, just, I just think, you know, take a breath, you know, um, do a bit of yoga. Just think about the world for a second and then make an assessment after that. We don't have to rush to judgment all the time because, you know, the alternative is he may have got off to a great start and, you know, was fit and scored in all four games and he's flying and then goes through a patch like all strikers where he doesn't score. And I just don't look at those things. What I look at is, you know, he's come in, he's fit in really well, but obviously and, and quite logically, you know, he's picked up you know, that injury that's disrupted the way he probably wanted to start his career. But, you know, we've still got plenty of time for that. That idea of taking a breath and doing a bit of yoga, do you think that applies maybe to the perception of the whole team as well? Do you think there's been a bit of an overreaction to the first sort of four games? No, I think it's, it's like I've said a few times, just the way of the world today, I think um, um, people would rather be first to make a judgment, even if they're wrong, rather than wait for somebody else. You know, I think it's just the way we live our lives these days that, you know... Um, there's far more, there's far more judgment um, than sort of real reasoned opinion or analysis, but that's just the way of the world, so we've got to live with that. And just finally, um, you're facing Ivan Tony obviously tomorrow. Um, the club were linked with him a lot. Was he a player you ever actually looked at? We're facing him tomorrow. Oh, I think, yeah, ignore me, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we didn't, so uh, just just to finish. But sorry, in case they signed him overnight, and I, I was going to go in there and do some new plans. That's all because uh, we planned without sorry. him. But yeah, did you ever look at him before you went? To see no, him? Oh, yeah, we did look at him. But I mean, I, the reality of it is, and I think I've said that Dom was the one I wanted, and it's kind of we took a, you know pretty much the whole summer to get him in because uh, he was the one that kind of fit the profile of what we were looking at at the time. Thank you. Can Thanks, you say from George, please. Just going back to Dom, obviously he hasn't been here very long, but I guess strikers, they do want that first goal. Do you still sense kind of a calmness in him and he's, he's not sort of, doesn't feel sort of over-anxious about trying to get that first goal and, and get away? <laughs> no, like I said, he's, he's just played a couple of games, not even full games. So, no, I haven't sensed that. I don't sense that. I don't, you know, I think he, in his mind, he just wants to be, in a good physical condition so he can contribute. That's that's where he's at and that's where we kind of the space we want him in. And um, like I said, hopefully, um, you yeah, know, he gets a bit of confidence out of the game time he got during the week and, you yeah, know, builds on that tomorrow. And I'm sure as the season goes on, he'll he'll be a real, you know, strong contributor for us. And, yeah, you mentioned the, the Wednesday game. You made the eight changes and you explained afterwards those eight players, I guess, needed the minutes. Now they've got the minutes, are we sort of less likely to see as many changes during the Europa League and, and the Carabao Cup going forward? Just depends, depends how, how we're going. Like I said, it was a bit different this week because we had we got a day less than sort of Europe is Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. So this is Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday. So with a day less, and so that's quite significant because Wednesday to Saturday, you know, there were guys who had to train today who played, you know, the other night, um, the day before a game. So it was always, we were always going to try and make as many changes as we could Wednesday night just to protect the lads, but also, um, you know, get some game time with the guys. So, But it'll be sort of horses for courses. We'll see how we're going through the next period. And uh, I'm sure you saw overnight um, Graham Arnold's left his role as the Australian manager. I assume you're not going to put your, your name in the ring, but just g generally, what did you make of that decision? Yeah, I'm not really close to it, but, um, you know, he's had a, he's had a you know, really uh, you know, great stint with as a national team boss, you know, he, he took him to the World Cup, uh, got his, got the best ever results in the World Cup. So, um, you know, and I, I think for anyone sort of, you know, when you when you manage your, your national team, um, it's 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 a proud moment. I'm sure he's proud of his achievements. But, um, you know, like all of us, he passed on the baton now to hopefully uh, somebody who can take the, the nation forward. OK, we'll end the broadcast section there. Move on to the Embargo section at 10.30pm tonight. Great. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Sure